Hello Save Jerseyans, this is your blogger in chief, Matt Rooney. We're continuing our across the state look at the 2013 candidates for public office, all the way up to legislative and statewide office, and all the way down to mayor, council, and dog catcher in all 21 counties of the Great Garden State. Today I'm meeting with one of my personal favorite politicos in New Jersey. He's from South Jersey, my neck of the woods. Um, he is a committed conservative. He's one of the good guys. And like Governor Christie, he says exactly what he's thinking. You never have to guess. And he is currently a freeholder in Gloucester County. Larry Wallace, I appreciate you stopping by to talk to the Save Jerseyans. Thanks a lot, Matt. It's a pleasure to be here. Larry, for people who are listening to this, and there's going to be plenty of them that are not just in the 3rd Legislative District where you're running for assembly this year, but all up and down the turnpike, can you maybe give us a little bit of inter an introduction into why you got involved in public life in Gloucester County to begin with? That's a great question, Matt. Uh, I've actually always been interested in politics. It's always fascinated me, and uh, it's something that um, has always been near and dear to my heart. Um, I never really thought I was electable, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, you know, I, I don't have a pedigree, I'm not rich, uh, I don't have some of the uh, uh, background that a lot of folks think you need to, to get elected. Uh, saying that though, what got me started was a big project that began in Gloucester County, Harrison Township, which is 322 Bypass. Uh, that came up at around 2005, and I got involved really because of Steve Sweeney. I didn't like the way the government was shoving it down our throats, the way they surprised everyone with what was going to happen. Uh, you have to understand at the time that was a major, major project. Uh, there were a lot of traffic issues around there, so something did need to be done. Uh, but the way they sort of bullied their way into the town, town folk and let them know that this was happening bothered me a lot. And uh, really, that was the uh, genesis, if you will, of me deciding to get involved in politics. I'm also the kind of guy that if I see a problem, I want to fix it. Uh, I don't just complain about it and go to bed at night. Um, I really want to roll up my sleeves, get involved, and, and try to make the problem uh, better. You ran for uh, Freeholder. In 2010, correct? Actually, I ran for the first time in 2008. It took right. me three attempts to uh, get in. But you're elected in 2010, right? Correct. Okay, okay. Correct. And you got elected in 2010, um, and it was a rough campaign. Um, it was it was a tough campaign. I think one of the turning points was when um, the other side accused you of uh, being against cancer research, funding for cancer research. And, of course, it turned out that you and your running mate, who's also a current Gloucester County freeholder who got elected that year, both had very personal experiences with cancer in your own lives. Um, so it backfired big time. It's part of the reason why I think voters rallied around you guys and you're here today. Um, is it tough being a fiscally conservative Republican in South Jersey politics? You mentioned Steve Sweeney. I don't think a lot of people really appreciate outside of South Jersey what a firm grip he and his allies have on this part of the world. Um, has it required a special kind of courage, or is it something that just comes automatically to you? You know, it's funny. It doesn't take any courage to be a fiscal conservative. Um, many of my friends growing up, a lot of people I knew were liberals. You know, they thought that the government should step in and, and take care of everything and pay for everything. It's funny how many people, as they get older, they get married, they have kids, they buy a house, suddenly become fiscal conservatives. They understand how much the government has been taking out of their paycheck, and they realize it's not the right way to go. So, you know, most people that I know are fiscally conservative. They don't want the government in their pocketbooks. The pro that is the problem in Gloucester County. The problem is the money that uh, the Democrats are able to bring to bear for every contest that's been going on for years. Uh, the money is almost endless, and money is what uh, you really need to be able to run a viable, effective campaign. Uh, getting great candidates is relatively easy. Um, being able to raise the money to counter the distortions and the misrepresentation and the personal attacks that are inevitable in every campaign, that's been the harder part. Despite all the obstacles that we're talking about that you've run up against, what are some of the proudest accomplishments 
that you've been able to achieve as a freeholder of Gloucester County. We should emphasize that at the moment, because this is an uphill climb, you are in the minority. Yeah, my, on the freeholder board. Right, but you've right. You've nevertheless had some successes. Well, we have to start with getting elected in Blue County. Right. Uh, so I am the first Republican that was elected in Gloucester County as a freeholder in almost two decades. Uh, that in and of itself is a, a major accomplishment. Um, after that, getting in, being in the minority, we knew it was going to be a challenge. Uh, saying that, one of the proudest things we were able to accomplish were, number one, eliminating full-time medical benefits for all the part-time freeholders, uh, commissioners, and uh, attendants to boards. Uh, that has been going on for many decades. Up to twenty-four, twenty-five thousand dollars per year uh, has been paid out for all these folks. Uh, in our first year of savings alone, we estimated the savings to be between four hundred fifty, five hundred thousand dollars. That's not chump change. Just in medical uh, health benefits alone, now, it's not chump change at all. In a county, it's a lot of money. Uh, additionally, we were able to uh, cut taxes and cut spending two years in a row. Um, it's something that hasn't happened in Gloucester County in 20 years. Um, and also, we were able to pass what we called our Bill of Rights, Taxpayer Bill of Rights. We were able to pass eight of the 11 uh, requests we had for greater transparency. So all of these things were done in the minority um, in our first year in office, and uh, I'm really very proud of that. Sure, and I, you know, I think I mentioned earlier in the interview that you, know, you have a lot of personality characteristics that are very similar to the governor. Um, it's, it's a lot of truth. It shocks a lot of people, but I think most people find it very endearing and very refreshing. But you also share with Governor Christie this ability to get things done, despite the fact that you're dealing with a lot of people from the other party who don't necessarily agree with you on many issues. Is that part of the reason you decided to run for the assembly this year? Because I know you, Larry. You're not the kind of guy that would love to spend every day in Trenton. You you love your district. You love South Jersey. Not a lot of people go to Trenton because <laughs> they love being around other legislators. What what makes you want to jump into the fray here? Well, I guess the first reason is I want to make a difference. Um, I saw how you could be effective as an elected official, and taking it to the next next level is the next logical step. Um, in addition, I was asked, uh, quite frankly, by a number of people to run. Um, they agree with you, I guess, in my passion and the ability to tell the truth, uh, to speak from the heart, and to not you know, play any games. Um, a lot of people confuse my passion for what I believe in with sort of a fiery rhetoric um, that they think I have sometimes. And it's really a passion. If I believe in a mission, if I believe in what I'm trying to do, if I think um, whatever is being done is wrong, uh, wrong for the good of the community, wrong for people, wrong for taxpayers, I'm going to jump in. And I'm not afraid to roll up, up, roll up my sleeves and, and you know, get into a, a, a little bit of a battle with uh, whatever the issue is you know, at the time. How many doors have you knocked so far this election season? We are well over 4,000 doors right now. That's probably more than one pair of shoes that you've gone through already. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it helped me lose a few pounds during the uh, campaign season. So uh, It's actually imagine. one of the more enjoyable parts of campaigning is talking to people, real people, uh, people that aren't expecting you to show up their door and ask them you know, what issues are, are affecting them, what issues do they care about, how do they feel about the candidates running. Um, it's really a way to stay grounded in the campaign. If you had to pick off the top of your head the three topics that seem to come up most often when you're knocking on these thousands of doors, uh, what are they? The three topics are really, really simple, and they pretty much come up every year. They're taxes, taxes, and taxes. Um, people, in that order? Pretty much in that order. Uh, jobs are uh, running a very, very close second because the economy is still very weak. It's very soft. We still have far too many people out of work. But the reality is most people vote on pocketbook issues, um, things that affect them directly, whether or not um, they can afford to go to the doctor or the dentist, whether they can uh, send Susie to ballet school versus uh, you know, paying for uh, dinner out one night. Um, every, every quarter when they write those uh, uh, 
property tax checks. Uh, it's killing a lot of people, driving people away from not only Gloucester County but New Jersey and it's something that uh, I'm very passionate about and one of the first priorities uh, of my term uh, once I get elected is reducing property taxes, uh, enacting the governor's 10% across the board reduction. Now, every year people campaign on taxes and I'm sure if I was able to get Steve Sweeney in here he would say, oh yeah, I'm for lower taxes too. Of course he hasn't affected that in all the years he's been in Trenton. If someone's out there listening to this right now, Larry, and they're an undecided voter in LD3, and they say, well, you know, Mr. Wallace, what are you going to do different that Steve Sweeney and his running mates aren't already doing? What do you tell them? That's a great question. And the one thing that my opponents cannot do is run away from their record. They have been involved in well over 100 tax and fee increases since they've been in office. Uh, property taxes have skyrocketed 70 percent. Those are facts and the rhetoric that they spew during during silly season uh, during this campaign season cannot be refuted. Um, the governor has already introduced a 10 percent across the board property tax relief bill. They've been held up by Steve Sweeney and the rest of the Democrats. That's a fact. Um, I have promised everyone that I've spoken to that in our first day in office, if we take control uh, of the Assembly, the first bill we will pass will be the 10% across the board property tax reduction bill, the very first one. We've gone on record with that. Assembly Leader Bramnick has gone on record with it. Um, it will be done if we're given the opportunity by the voters of the 3rd District and the other districts in play. Now, Larry, I know that you're a small businessman and maybe you could tell us a little bit about that, but I also noticed that you and your running mates, Bob Vanderslice, who's a freeholder uh, down in Salem County, and Nikki Trunk, who's the Senate candidate this year for the Republicans in LD3, you recently held a small business round table, and you met with people who were actually job creators in your district, and I'm sure you got an earful, because business people usually have a lot of opinions when they meet the folks who either are already making the laws that affect their ability to produce jobs or the folks who want to be in those positions. What are some of the concerns that they express to you? Well, again, it's another great point. It's another reason why I'm running for assembly. Um, it really uh, burns me up a little bit when we have most legislatures in Trenton have never run a business, never owned a business. We're never responsible for making payroll. Um, yet they're the ones that are trying to tell business owners how to run their business. Um, I am a small business owner. I have to make payroll every single week, pay taxes, pay the mortgage, so on and so forth. Um, in addition, I actually run the business to try to keep it afloat, to keep it running and, and, and grow. Um, so we did have a recent roundhouse, uh, roundtable discussion with a bunch of business owners down south. And basically there were two or three major issues, I guess. The first one, of course, is taxes. They're getting killed with taxes, both payroll tax, state tax, property tax. You name the tax, we have to pay it. But the second thing is regulations. Regulations also cost business a lot of money, and a lot of people don't really understand it. But every time you have to pay for a license um, or any other reason to send money to the state in order to, for the privilege of doing business in Jersey, costs more money. Um, the third thing that did come up, and I think was more timing, was Obamacare. Uh, with Obamacare kicking in, there's still a lot of confusion out there about who's covered, who's not, what you have to do, what it's going to cost you. Uh, so that was the other issue that came up uh, during our, our uh, uh, business roundtable discussion. But by far, it's taxes and it's regulations um, and the inability to either start a business, grow a business, or maintain the business here in New Jersey. Um, so. They were really the major issues, and of course, being a small business owner myself, I could relate exactly to what they were talking about. I don't think a lot of people, especially outside of South Jersey, appreciate how our economy down here has continued to sag and lag behind other parts of the country and even other parts of the state. Um, and some of these legislators, Steve Sweeney, Jeff Van Drew, Fred Madden, uh, they've been in power for a while. Democrat governors, Republican governors, always the same rhetoric. They never really seem to make a difference. Have you noticed the frustration when you're out there in the campaign trail? Are people identifying 
the individuals who are actually responsible for keeping the status quo in place that's not working for them. Absolutely. Uh, people are disgusted with these lifetime politicians that are in trend. Um, they are under the belief that once you get elected, you go to trend, you forget about the little guy. They are frustrated. They're disgusted by it. They really want change. And the reason why we're in the economic predicament we're in is because it's the same folks that have been in office for the last 10, 15, 20 years. It's the same people over and over and over. Um, if you want to make change, you really have to vote in new people. Um, again, I go back to what I said earlier. Look at their record. You can't run from the record. Forget about the rhetoric. Forget about the commercials. Forget about the mailers. Look at their rhetoric. How many, or look at their record. How many times have they voted to increase taxes, to increase fees, to increase regulations? How many times have, have they been unfriendly to businesses in throughout New Jersey? Um, if, if you recall, if you're really paying attention to what's going on, it wasn't until Chris Christie got elected that suddenly we had these business friendly and tax reducing type of legislation being passed. Before that there were all increases. Budget went up, debt went up, spending went up, taxes went up. Since Christie's been in office things have turned around. He's begun to turn the ship of state around a little bit. But now he's stymied by the rest of the Democrats that are holding up the rest of his agenda. What he wants to do, for instance, um, the sick leave. We have about $850 million in sick leave that's being banked right now. And people take advantage of it, unfortunately, and it's one of the tools in the governor's tool chest that we want to help pass. It's not going to happen with a uh, Democrat majority. It will happen with a Republican majority. Larry, you mentioned how you're running against a trio of career politicians. A machine. A machine, it is. It's a machine that spans from uh, the Delaware River all the way over to the Atlantic Ocean. And you mentioned benefits for public employees and some of the reforms that they that, we're, that we were able to get rid of on the freeholder board. Yes. Right. You've had success in, in Gloucester County, but they've been stymieing at the state level. Um, double dipping is also a problem, and that's when politicians have more than one job and as a result they have more than one pension and they end up being able to vastly augment their benefits to get more money even though they're not really doing more work um, and it's one of the major cost drivers and it, it's certainly a, something that most people consider wildly inappropriate is that a problem in the third legislative district uh, i believe it's a problem governor christie believes it's a problem uh, my running mates nikki trunk and bob vanderslice all believe it's a problem um, and it's no small coincidence that at one point or another, all three of our opponents, Sweeney, uh, Burchelli, and uh, Riley, have all double dipped at one time or another. Um, and it's one of the things that are attributing, uh, contributing to the increases uh, in living here in New Jersey. Uh, me, myself, I'm not going to even take the health care benefits. I don't want them. I don't need them. I'll pay for them myself. And if I can, I'll bow out of the pension system. Again, it's something that you shouldn't be entitled to these kind of benefits being a part-time elected official. Um, it's not right, it's too expensive, and I think it's a good way to show the citizens of New Jersey that you're not in it for yourself, but you're really in it to help them. There's no doubt in my mind, Larry, that um, Save Jerseyans that are in our audience listen to this interview. They want to help you. Some of them are in South Jersey in your district. Some of them are all the way up in Bergen County or Middlesex County or Monmouth County. We'll take his, uh, help throughout the state. I I'm sure you will. And that was going to be my final question here. If they want to help you, how can they? They can contact our campaign. They can go to our website, www.larryandbobforassembly.com. Uh, there's a con contribution button that they can click and, and make a contribution, or they can volunteer for our campaign. We could always use more volunteers. Larry, I appreciate you taking time away from all those doors to talk to us. I know we're getting close to Election Day, so you're a busy guy. You have many more doors to hit between now and then, but I know this is a race that a lot of political watchers around New Jersey are watching because they think that there's a very vulnerable Senate seat and very vulnerable Assembly seats. Um, and if they go Republican, 
on election night, which many people think there's a strong possibility, then it's going to be a really good night, not just for Governor Christie, but for the GOP and for the taxpayers, in our humble opinion. Well, and that's who I care about the most is the taxpayers, because they're the ones that are going to win ultimately. Uh, we're going to have some business-friendly um, and uh, property tax uh, bills that will be passed very, very quickly uh, through both sides of the state house if we get the Republican majority. Um, that's guaranteed it'll be done day one, and I look forward to casting my first vote. I've heard from numerous sources that Chris Christie's told everybody, be ready to work if the Republicans make progress in the legislature. So trust, I know you will. Yeah, trust me, me, Nikki, and Bob, we're ready to work from day one. We want to make New Jersey affordable. I don't want to leave New Jersey. I don't want my family to leave New Jersey. I, I uh, was raised my entire life here in New Jersey. I love New Jersey. I think it's a great place to raise a family. And I just want to make it affordable um, for everyone to stay here. My kids to stay here, my grandkids to stay here, and everyone that's out there. Larry Wallace, Gloucester County Freeholder, current candidate for the Assembly in the 3rd Legislative District, along with Bob Vanderslice and Nikki Trunk, who we'll actually be talking to later this week. Thanks so much for stopping by. Thank you, Matt. Best Enjoy. of luck, Larry. Thank you, sir.